typical is ischemia is the uh, increase in the perfusion that threatens the viability of the limb. There is the overall uh, deviation, but when it is sudden, decrease in the perfusion that threatens the viability of the limb, then it is part as liquid in ischemia. And uh, it could be uh, done by complete or even partial occlusion of the arterial supply to the limb. And critical limb ischemia is more likely uh, than uh, acute limb ischemia. Chronic critical uh, limb ischemia is more likely than, uh, than acute limb ischemia to be seen in general practice. But for us as a surgeon, uh, when we encounter this uh, acute limb ischemia, most of the time in post traumatic patients and uh, injured patients, we come across more of this uh, acute limb ischemia. And uh, these uh, uh, chronic limb ischemia are more. Uh, 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 come more into our uh, outpatient departments with uh, various of uh, its complications with quality and other uh, um, the symptoms of uh, chronic ischemia uh, as an ulcer or gangly, uh, uh, etc. The hemodynamic definition of critical ischemia is when the ankle brachial pressure index is less than 0.4 and uh, due to brachial pressure index when it is less than 0.7, it is limb ischemia only, but when it is more than, uh, less than 0.4, it is uh, critical limb ischemia. And uh, transcutaneous pressure of oxygen uh, can also be, uh, uh, is also taken as a hemodynamic definition where it is less than 40 mm drop. So, for the acute limb ischemia, except for these uh, thrombotic and uh, uh, embol uh, embolic uh, phenomena, traumatic is the most common that we come across. Uh, uh, thrombosis is the commonest one, uh, especially in the uh, in chronic critical limb ischemia. But when uh, uh, there is plaque rupture and thrombosis, uh, in a chronic uh, in setting of a chronic limb ischemia, then they might present as acute uh, limb ischemia too. Embolization with uh, some disease uh, elsewhere, in the, either in the heart or as a major peripheral, uh, peripheral or central uh, arterial aneurysms. In such uh, instances, uh, there can be embolization of the plaque that has been found in the uh, in uh, these uh, plaque rupture site or uh, inside the heart when they, uh, when they have atrial fibrillation or some uh, structural heart diseases. Uh, in such instances, embolization is the second commonest phenomenon uh, of uh, the acute critical uh, ischemia. And of course, trauma is another one. And uh, the clinical features of uh, critical limb ischemia in acute setting is sudden onset of pain, pallor, pulsinessness, paresthesia, perishing, cold, and paralysis. The six days that is the famous uh, six days, um, which uh, will, um, the patient will present with. And of all, pain is the most common feature that they present with uh, with uh, critical limb ischemia. And uh, color chains and paresthesia, coldness are more common with the critical limb ischemia who present with uh, chronic critical limb ischemia. So, claudication, skin changes uh, after chronic ischemia like uh, shiny skin, loss of hair, brittle nails, discolored skin, ulcer, and gangrene, these are more common in uh, chronic uh, critical limb ischemia. So, uh, and uh, History, uh, we can always ask for the uh, features of chronic pain ischemia, uh, whether they have fabrication, whether they have uh, previous ulcers, whether they have uh, some uh, pulsating mass in the abdomen, pulsating mass uh, somewhere else in the uh, limbs itself, uh, uh, which can cause uh, the uh, thromboembolic phenomenon or uh, can present with acute uh, limb ischemia. Uh, it is less uh, common to have. Uh, critical limb ischemia in the upper limb as compared to the lower limb, but uh, there, are the, uh, there are conditions where there is, there is uh, critical limb ischemia in the upper limbs like uh, cervical grief, compression of the subclavian artery and the formation of the, uh, of the subclavian artery aneurysm with sour embolus, uh, Raynaud's phenomenon, Raynaud's disease. Uh, these are the conditions, common conditions that we come across uh, when we deal with uh, critical upper limb uh, ischemia, while as uh, in lower limb ischemia, it is, uh, uh, it is uh, I don't know, our atherosclerotic uh, disease is the most common, uh, then uh, followed by aneurysms and uh, structural uh, anomalies of the artery itself, and there are, uh, there are some conditions like uh, popliteal artery syndrome where it is compressed uh, with 
the ligament and was uh, the aneurysm of the popliteal artery, part of uh, ischemia by uh, due to stenosis per se. And uh, there are uh, further embolic phenomena, I think uh, we can think of the atrial fibrillation, heart is the prominent site for the uh, thromboembolic phenomena. Uh, and recent MI with neural thrombus, uh, or deeper peripheral arterial embolism side of the side which can uh, impact uh, thrombus and this can uh, embolize. And chronic uh, atheromatous plaque rupture uh, can also cause uh, the thrombosis and thromboembolic phenomena. So, uh, whenever we come across the uh, critically ischemic wave, time is the uh, time is uh, the prime thing that we uh, have to consider. And uh, as far as possible, we should be dealt as early as possible. If uh, the limb ischemia, acute, uh, especially if they uh, stand for more than six hours, then we are always worried about uh, reperfusion injury and, uh, and uh, limb loss is there, but uh, if we happen to uh, uh, revascularize then there, uh, there is high chances that we can come across reperfusion injury and we might lose the patient uh, itself. So uh, classification of the limb ischemia, it is uh, adapted from the other board and it is uh, category one where there is no immediate uh, threat but the patient might present with um, features of chronic limb ischemia like uh, uh, claudication, skin changes, ulcers, etc. Uh, 2A it is marginally threatened and uh, from 2A onwards we have to uh, intervene uh, in these patients as early as possible. Um, to a, they are marginally threatened and uh, salvageable if promptly treated, uh, treated and uh, they have uh, defined in uh, many different aspects uh, motor deficit, arterial doppler, and uh, venous doppler uh, finding. Early um, uh, symptoms that comes uh, when uh, there is a kidney symptom with the sensory loss, uh, motor is the last one to uh, be lost in the, 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 the pattern. So autonomic uh, system is the first to go off, but we uh, neither patient nor we uh, as a clinician uh, uh, try to assess for the autonomic uh, feature loss of repetitive uh, ischemia. But the sensory loss definitely we, we will have to uh, look at it. These are the objective things that we can uh, look for while dealing with the critical ischemia. And three are those uh, type three are those uh, who have major tissue loss and permanent not uh, not damage. These are uh, very uh, detrimental. If we uh, try to reperfuse these uh, limbs, then we might lose the patient because of the reperfusion injury or the uh, or, uh, systemic um, sepsis. So, differential diagnosis of acute ischemia per se are not much, but uh, sometimes uh, acute TBT uh, with hemorrhage uh, uh, cell loss or uh, dolence they may uh, be present as uh, acute ischemic uh, limbs, but they are quite aware due to uh, having uh, either the of this uh, in acute TBT. The spinal cord or uh, peripheral nerve compression uh, sometimes can mimic uh, claudication and acute uh, pain of the um, ischemia, but uh, can be well uh, differentiated by uh, thorough examination of the pulse itself. So uh, there are not much of differential diagnosis of acute uh, critical limb ischemia. So, uh, for, uh, while investigating uh, after thorough uh, history and examination is the prime uh, while dealing with the critical limb ischemia, Doppler is the first line of um, investigations to uh, confirm the diagnosis that we have made uh, with the clinical uh, adjustment. And uh, CT angiography is, uh, is must uh, while uh, dealing with uh, acute or uh, uh, acute limb ischemia in the setting or in the background of the chronic limb ischemia or when we suspect some other lesions also. But for, uh, for uh, all uh, practical purposes, CT and Ukraine should not be weighted because if uh, we wait uh, for the uh, revascularization for, for, for the CT scan, it might take uh, uh, some time before we intervene in such patients. So there are uh, uh, so uh, CT angiography is reserved for those who have acute uh, critical limb ischemia in the setting of the uh, chronic uh, limb ischemia or the chronic uh, critical limb ischemia per se. Otherwise else uh, we will lose time by uh, obtaining this uh, angiographic uh, uh, procedure. And, uh, so uh, here uh, 
in the first uh, picture we can we can see there is uh, um, there is lots of uh, um, feeling in the femoral superficial femoral artery uh, which is well visualized and uh, well visualized in the CT angiogram uh, and uh, this this CT angiogram will have some advantage even in acute early uh, ischemia setting that where we can access, where we should access uh, to the uh, arterial tree of the lower limb, especially lower limb, where we can uh, access to. Uh, for this, we will go from the uh, femoral artery itself. Uh, if we happen to do with uh, uh, with CT uh, angiogram, but while in uh, doctor, we might uh, not be uh, definitely told about where exactly the lesion is, and we uh, might uh, choose another. Uh, uh, arterial access for, uh, for the embolectomy itself. Right here in the second picture there is uh, occlusion of the uh, artery and uh, there is uh, stenosis. So uh, this uh, could be stenosis, uh, is red, red arrow, uh, uh, so the stenosis of the artery where uh, the uh, thrombosis uh, can occur. And in such settings, only embolectomy might not help uh, in these patients. So, CT angiogram uh, after uh, even after uh, primary embolectomy is uh, is uh, logical so as to uh, tackle these uh, stenosis when they have uh, these stenosis uh, on top of the acute ischemia. Then we might have to go and treat these stenosis too. So, uh, ankle to uh, brachial stenosis. Uh, this. Uh, we have already talked about it uh, while we, uh, dealing with the hemodynamic uh, data, but when it is more than 1.3, then uh, also it is not uh, reliable, and uh, mm, uh, so it is uh, consistent with the finding of the calcified vessels, which are not compressible with the cough, that uh, pneumatic cough that we are using while uh, taking ankle uh, and brachial uh, throat indices. So normal is uh, between 1.1 to 1.3, uh, low normal is 0.91 to 1, uh, less than uh, 0.9 is mild disease uh, up to the point uh, 0.71 and uh, moderate disease is 0.41 to uh, 0.70 and when it is less than uh, 0.40, 0.40 it is a uh, critical limb scheme. So management there are uh, some basic uh, um, uh, fund up uh, for the management of this critical limb ischemia. Whenever we come across uh, acute limb ischemia, it is a surgical uh, emergency, and uh, we should start with high flow oxygen, adequate IV access, and therapeutic dose of heparin as soon as we uh, rule out any other contraindications for the heparin uh, use in uh, such patient. Uh, preferably, a whole of tools uh, followed by. Uh, the uh, initiation of the infusion dose uh, whenever it is practical. And uh, conservative management, uh, uh, there is much less of a uh, scope of this conservative management in acute limb ischemia, but in chronic limb ischemia, when they present with uh, uh, critical uh, this um, cloudication and skin changes only, and uh, we, uh, while going for the uh, investigation and uh, um, investigating, uh, these patients can. Uh, be considered for the conservative management for the time being. Uh, these are mostly the rather for 1 or 2A. 2A, we still prefer to go for the surgical management rather than the conservative one, but for rather for type 1, when there is no uh, absolute threat uh, to the limb itself, then we can go for the conservative management with prolonged course of heparin so that we can make out uh, the uh, actual diagnosis, what the cause of the acute thrombosis is in such patients and we can deal with the cause itself along with the effect of the, the embolic uh, um, or thrombotic uh, occlusion of that artery. And regular assessment with uh, APTT and clinical review is the must uh, along with uh, the sonological or uh, CT and geographical uh, review in, uh, in such patients. And surgical intervention may be warranted if no significant improvement is seen, and when they, uh, we uh, or the clinician judge that uh, the, uh, leaving the lesion might cause uh, uh, acute uh, limb ischemia in the future, would also warrant uh, surgical management in such patients. In the surgical intervention, it is mandatory for most of the patients 
coffee with the tube and ava. Involectomy is uh, most commonly performed uh, for the procedure and local intraarterial thrombolysis with the catheter uh, is another uh, thing that we can do uh, to uh, save these limbs and bypass surgery uh, along with these procedures are uh, 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 in separate uh, um, especially in the chronic critical limb ischemia when there is uh, thrombotic occlusion and cardiovascular occlusion is the uh, is the same. So uh, the uh, surgical intervention that uh, we can go across is uh, bypass or the in, in situ uh, embolectomy or in thrombolysis. So uh, for irreversible ischemia, we should uh, consider the uh, amputations early on so that we would not uh, avoid the reperfusion injury and uh, might cause uh, cause uh, death of the patients uh, because of the reperfusion injury or the sepsis. So long term management is again reduction of the cardiovascular mortality. Uh, in, in all these patients, they uh, have a cardiovascular, cerebrovascular risk along with the uh, critical limb ischemia. So uh, that should be done. Most cases uh, should be started on antiplatelet uh, agents uh, for the long term, and uh, cases requiring amputation would require uh, to get thorough investigation for the cause and associated other uh, other uh, reasons like uh, my, uh, coronary artery disease, cerebrovascular disease. Uh, these things should be considered uh, and looked for in these patients. So complications. Uh, of acute limb ischemia that we have already come across uh, when dealing with uh, reperfusion injury is the sudden increase in capillary permeability after reperfusion of the uh, uh, ischemic limb and release of the potassium ion, hydrogen ion, myoglobin and uh, the myoglobin and other toxins they cause uh, acute kidney injury and might uh, cost uh, the life of the patient. And uh, hemofiltration uh, with uh, dialysis uh, is uh, the treatment uh, in case of uh, this uh, reperfusion injury, apart from uh, giving bicarbonate, uh, uh, adequate hydration, uh, and uh, dialysis uh, are uh, um, uh, ensured early on when we suspect that uh, the patient has long ischemic period in such instances so as to prepare, uh, um, uh, prepare for, uh, for the postponed these uh, adverse effect of the reperfusion injury. So a take home message in uh, this presentation is minutes means muscle, so time is always the prime. Epilinization uh, is thing that we can do as early as possible. Uh, interventional management is must in most of the patients. Amputation and mortality is still high even after we uh, go with uh, in this uh, surgical management. And reperfusion injury should be, uh, suspicion should be uh, um, Suspicion should be there when we deal with uh, uh, reperfusing uh, critical means who have been uh, ischemic for quite a long time. And uh, early suspicion is uh, a key to save lives. Thank you.